Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good timing, Terry. Uh, why don't we start? Well, no, I see Travis isn't actually there right now. No, I'm, I'm here. I'm just not physically here. All right. Say hi, Travis. Hello. <laughs> I think you're playing Victor tonight. We'll see. I don't know what's happening anymore, honestly. <laughs> That's reassuring. <laughs> Listen, I never know what's happening. I'm just doing things. And then face you could say right. I'm an actor. Ooh. I wish my face was in frame. Camera doesn't love me. And Bry. Hello, I'm Bry. I play Bernadette Brandt, and right now I exist in the void. The second faceless person, Joey. Hey, everybody. I'm playing Connor Leon, and I am also in the void. Hello, I am Terry. I play as James. I am the nerd, the historian, the medic, and uh, currently with a big cat. Yes, you are. Uh, in fact, oh, that's right. When we left off, you were alone in your bedroom, and a large black panther had just come through the window. And uh, I believe you said something to it about returning the uh, returning returning what was uh, what was stolen. Yeah. Return the slab. <laughs> so it you said that, and it paused, and then it's going to turn away from you. It's going to slink over behind a. Uh, a room divider, a dressing curtain. And? You just lie there in bed and wait? I'll probably get out of bed. But I'll be slow about it. Okay. Uh, and after a moment... A young woman right is going back. to poke her head around the side of the curtain and say, Can you please hand me a robe? Just a moment. And I will, uh, yes, I will grab a robe. Okay. A moment later, uh, a young woman is going to step out from behind the dressing curtain wearing a robe. And, uh, she's going to say, uh, you intend to return what was stolen? Yes. That was, uh, always my intention. Although, I will be kind of sad not to, uh, actually get to finish my reading on it. But it's, ultimately, it's not mine. It's stolen in the first place. Only right to return it. She regards you gravely. In fact, she's going to ask, do you, do you know where it needs to be? I know where... What was the guy's name again? Van Hoeven. I know where Van Hoeven took it from. I don't know if that's where it needs to go, though. It must be returned there. Do you know the way? I could possibly find a way to get there. I won't know it right away. I need someone else to guide me. I am not prepared to return it myself. I have not brought clothing. In my other form, I don't have hands. I 
I will take you there. Are you prepared? Going into the I would, desert. I'll have to go and gather everything quick and put it all together, but yeah, I think I should be prepared. You won't need much. I won't lead you into danger. I'll wait for no. you outside. All right. Uh, she walks back behind the curtain. And a moment later, the panther emerges out the other side and leaps out the window. I will uh, walk out my room and gather all of the uh, the papers, put them all together. Okay. Uh, there are two other people here right now. Do you want to take either of them with you, or are you just... This is not. This is not like a war. Uh, I I feel like it's fun to go on a solo mission. Okay. Sure. Going into the <laughs> desert with a furry black panther. I mean, I. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm not supposed to be a lot in danger. We have. We have resolved your cliffhanger. And uh, we'll move away from you and back to the hospital for just a moment. <laughs> so, uh... Victor has just been forcibly returned to his bed and strapped down. Ernie is laughing. <laughs> Both of you are very drunk. I'm high on prescription medication. <laughs> And Connor, you are having a discussion with uh, Mr. Aldahami, uh -huh. who has informed you that uh, that undesirable people broke into the well. It's a former mosque. It's now more of a medical facility, but uh, they were storing some artifacts. Uh, they were storing an artifact to protect it from evil forces that wanted to reacquire it. Uh, and last night, those evil forces broke into the mosque, stole the artifact, killed several of his best friends, uh, and then disappeared into the night. And he told you that the uh, what they were guarding was the girdle of Natakris, which he thinks can be used in part of a ritual to resurrect the ancient queen. I, I just have one quick question. Yeah, you can scream it from your bed. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm gonna... This is in character. Is that my face in the corner staring back at me? Or am I just crazy? Uh, I see you clicking on a blank space. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, it, it was just glitched out. Are you hovering it, over your image? Because it will show you your face if you're hovering over it. It, it don't. I'm just crazy. It it it, it was bugged out. Okay, don't fine. don't worry about. It. <sighs> you scream, is that my face in the corner? And everybody ignores you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That works. Yeah, that works with me. Bert, Bertie, Bertie's laughing at him specifically. <laughs> Connor. Uh, yes. You are going to face a little bit of a, uh, a dilemma right now. Because from your past experience with uh, the other cults involved in whatever this conspiracy oh. is, uh, their large, their biggest rituals are always centered around the new moon. Mm -hmm. And if they stole an artifact that they needed last night, they might be using it tonight. And here okay. you are in a hospital with two members of your team all drugged up. Yep, that that's Joey. That yeah. 
just because we're drugged up does not mean we can't have a good time. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to erase that from memory. Um, In fact, I think this is going to be an even better opportunity to do things. Uh, so what you're saying? What are you? What are you suggesting? Uh, if they're using it, you know, they they they, they had to be using it somewhere. Let's, let's find that somewhere. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, just say this. It's a big place out there. Where are you gonna find it in all that sand? You do have several clues. Close to where it could be. Are those several clues at all close to each other? Would this be a idea roll I'm hearing? Uh, huh? I suppose. Is that, is that... an, I suppose you can do an idea roll. Okay, you know I I'm still drugged up, but um, do you want do you want to impose anything on this? No. Okay, I mean like. So you, um, they had done all of this digging work around the pyramids at Giza and around the Sphinx. Mm. Uh, that's where they found supposedly the mummy of Notocris. And they worked there for a long time, even before actually digging her up. Am I the only one who's hearing him all muffled? Just a little, yeah. Yeah, at the end he was. Hmm. How's this? Better, better. Clear. So, you know that they spent a long time digging around the pyramids at Giza and around the Sphinx. Hmm. <coughs> And with your, with your occult knowledge, you might have heard rumors about, um, unconfirmed rumors about ancient tunnels running around underground in that area. Mm-hmm. But, uh, only one of you is not drugged up, and it's going to be up to Connor whether he thinks it's a good idea to go try to interrupt... Uh, some sort of ritual in this state. I, I, uh, so Connor doesn't know this information. I will, I will call, I will, will beckon Connor to come over. Connor! Connor, get over here! Uh, Connor will sigh and hold up a finger to, to pause our very important discussion that's being interrupted by... <laughs> this <laughs> and head over I, I I think I know where they're at they're they're tunnels between the pyramids the Gaza uh, or Giza I did I figured it all out man I, I think I know where they're at Let's go. Victor, Victor, you are tied to a bed. We ain't going nowhere. No, oh, that's why I need him to undo it so we can go. Uh. I don't. I don't think the nurses are gonna be particularly happy about that. A uh, question. Uh, when is the bill due? Before or after we <laughs> receive service? Uh, you would most likely pay when you're when you're exiting. <laughs> we could just sneak out. But we have money, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me put something in perspective, right? Uh huh. 
You have money. I we're willing to pay for you so you don't die. <laughs> Listen, this isn't the first time I dine and dash, okay? Just just take my lead. Just undo um, the belt the buckle. That is a blatant lie. You have left me with the bill. At least once. Yeah, this is my first time dining dashing. I know I know how to do this. You are the worst kind of person. And also, I'm tired. I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah, uh, Andrew. Mm-hmm. How? How? How believable is he in this state right now? I mean, that's entirely up to him. <laughs> like, he is clearly, like, like he he is so drugged up that he got himself tied down to the bed. <laughs> this is in fact a true statement. Uh yeah, so just look. You're in really bad shape right now. Nothing and... a little bit of dirt or sand in this case can't take care of no, Add a little we're not, spit. We're we're not rubbing dirt and spit in your open wounds. <laughs> Connor, Connor. Yes. From from one relatively sane person to another, I think we should stay here. I think you guys should stay here too. Um, you guys? What do you mean, you guys? Are you leaving us? Don't leave us. That's not <laughs> fair. I need you to undo these belt buckles. Fuck. 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 It's either I send myself and get a couple other people and, you know, me, the Frenchman, and the kid to check this out. Or... We don't need to get the kids involved. Just the three of us. We got this. No. (laughs) He leans down at you. (laughs) Just just no. Listen, listen. All we need is just... Three of us were good enough. We'll we'll go in. We'll we'll take them out one by one. I already got a plan. I absolutely trust. not. You gotta you gotta trust that that you gotta trust the process, man. Nurse, <laughs> nurse. Uh, yes. When you start calling out, a nurse will come in. Nurse, I think my friend needs some stronger sedatives. He's talking about trying to break out of here. <laughs> uh, There's something I'm, I'm continuously going to try to tell, get you to un, undo things. Yeah, she'll tell you, listen, I, I appreciate your concern. I'm afraid if I give him anything stronger, it's going to be too much for him. But, uh... Those are very strong restraints. Much bigger men. She looks at his skinny arms. <laughs> this, man has, <laughs> this man has not... Like, come on. He's keeping the rest of us awake. Yes, I'm... I'm sorry about could, that. Could, could, you, could you put a pillow over his head or something? Uh, <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> How do I? Does. How do you slip out of restraints? <sighs> oh God! Sleight of hand, dexterity. <laughs> Let's see. Uh... There's not an escape skill. This is important. This is a, this is a thing that we should know. Uh, there's not a sleight of hand skill either. There is sleight of hand. I have it at sixty. You do? I yeah. suppose there is. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I suppose there's probably not something that would be more appropriate. But let me see something else. No. 
I I got a little <laughs> trigger happy. I won't lie, but you can you can see whatever you need. Yeah, I'm just looking at the. Uh... I imagine that there would be a difficulty associated. seem to affect your uh, your regular roles but I mean that's a that's a failure anyway so uh, Carter mm -hmm. make your decisions you don't have Con to go anywhere you can just yeah. say that this is just too much and sit this one out you can go by yourself you can break your friends out. Any option is available to you. Uh, I'm thinking Connor should, uh, at, le at the very least, ask where before, you know, Victor goes night-night. Uh. <laughs> I can't tell you. You had, you had to free me. Come on, bud. <laughs> I figured it all out. You gotta trust me. I'm fine. I served. I've had morphine before. This that stuff gets not... me amped. That's not how morphine works. I... Okay. Isn't morphine just a painkiller, right? No. They're just. It's, it's, a, it's uh, a little more. Side effects: nausea, constipation, and immobility for one d three hours. Yeah. Also, you know, you it makes your, your brain feel like you're moving in slow motion, <laughs> and you're constantly falling. And it it literally makes you feel like you are puppeting a rag doll for a body. Like there. When there is got, no. <laughs> when you got up There's... and walked over to yeah. that other bed, that was a supreme act of will, and you really can't get beyond that point. Yeah. Like, if he if he takes you guys out of here right now, he's basically pushing you out in wheelchairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't have legs, my guy. I'm I'm just gonna silently be upset then. Hey, listen, if uh if Connor chooses to go, he already said he's gonna pick up uh <laughs> Jean and your son, so you're not gonna be out of the game. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. So Connor, what's your choice here? I mean, I still don't know where we're going, so... He was rambling about the pyramids and uh, Giza. He did say something about Giza, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, so Connor... Connor is going to try and, like, get him to spill the beans, like... Yeah, you already told me about the... the While well, he's like, I won't tell you unless you go with me. Connor is just going to say, well, yeah, you already talked about Giza. You already so, told me exactly where, don't you remember? <laughs> so, uh, Victor doesn't like, actually know where any of these tunnels would be, but they... No, nobody does. Yeah. Basically, is... Connor is trying to gaslight a drug-addled Victor into giving a little bit more details. Listen, listen. So he can go to the job. <laughs> All I know is... Secret tunnels. I'm gonna find them. I just need to get over there and I'll find it. I am him. I do the things. I I I will destroy my enemy. I will seek and find him, no matter how. <laughs> and he's gonna ramble on like this for a while about how he he will find it. I love that. Beautiful.
Yeah, and just, just uh, like Connor is going to sit po- politely through like a fifth of it and turn to Birdie and say, "Okay, so you know that this is important. You know that I have to do this." Connor, the last time you went somewhere without me, you got kidnapped, and th- they did weird magic stuff to you. I don't want well, you to go. I went with that, that man. I'm bringing more than one person with me this time. So you're leaving me alone with him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving you with medical professionals and people that know our plight. He kind of gestures towards the uh, man that he was having a conversation with. But but you're the one leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. I know. Fine. Go do your stuff. Stupid hero thing. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Like... Me. <laughs> she has like that flailing arm thing and it's dangling and he just picks it back up and drops it on her chest unceremoniously. We're heading out. <laughs> Connor, when you head out into the night, you notice that there mm-hmm. seem to be. You don't see any signs of it actually raining, but you can see lightning in the distance. Oh, that's a good direction to head. He says out loud while lighting a cigarette. <laughs> <sighs> So yeah, uh, Connor is going to go out and try to rally some troops and probably be surprised that he can't find her, uh, uh, James. Yeah, when you return to the hotel, you're able to rally Jean and Theodore, but there is no sign of James. Just uh, his, his window open, uh, a robe on the floor, and his clothing seemingly gone. <laughs> Um. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. Theodore would be like, "Um, this isn't my fault. I don't know what happened." <laughs> <laughs> okay, but oh, I, that I, makes but, me by the like way, I feel like I fault. did not leave a note. Oh, I'm yeah. Yeah. You no. Didn't, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You didn't leave a note. The note you left was uh, all uh, the scrolls with you. Yeah, it's like okay. Cl- clearly, uh, clearly, James knows what he's doing right now. Uh, this is, you this is important. This is important. I know I'm not there, but is the house cat still there, or has she left too? There's no sign of any cats. Oh. <laughs> okay, so James took uh, James left and took the cats and scrolls. Cool. Next issue. You two, we have to stop a ritual. Who's ready to who's ready to shoot some bad guys? And he does like you know, like the finger gun thing at them while they're still laying down. <laughs> Bri, how do you feel about being an enormous Frenchman? I don't know the first thing about being an enormous Frenchman. I will roll you? for him. I will roll for him, but I'm not going to say his lines or anything. That's fair. Oh, come on. You're not comfortable with. I know. I expected a wee wee. No, I'm going to make Joey be the one to voice him, and then I'll I'll roll. Joey's going to have to argue with himself. Yep. I'm good at arguing with myself. That's my passive state. (laughs) <laughs> Speaking of James, 
You're going yes. to be led on a long, winding path through narrow passages. Uh, this panther usually walking on rooftops just where you can see it. Uh, sometimes jumping down in the street to lead you through difficult passages. Uh, sometimes you have to climb up ladders. Uh, there are... At one point, uh, the panther leads you through what seems to be an abandoned house, but you can't really be sure. Hmm. All right. And then finally to a steep and narrow stairway leading down into the earth. Once yeah. it reaches this point, it sits. Take it, we're here then. Uh, what do I see? Only a stairway leading down to the earth, uh, and the moonlight is only enough to light the first few stairs. It heads down into darkness. Ah. Oh, we just set up a top of the stairs. Okay. You're at the top I thought of the we stairs. Were... Then I will just go down. Okay. Uh, and when you go down, you find... Yeah, you got muffled again. You find a strange thing. Uh, the bottom of the stairs, there's a door. And when you open the door and step through, you seem to be in a different space. Hold on. You are, you are extremely muffled. I was about to say, is he is he muffled for anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't there know it is. What to do uh, about I hear you that. good now. Now you sound fine. There. I hear okay. you good now. I think Weird. there might just be connection issues tonight because I'm not changing anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you you find yourself as you step through the doorway, you step into a much larger space that does not appear to be a dirt basement in Cairo. Uh -huh. And on the other side of this space, as you step into it, you see an enormous statue of a human woman with a cat head. The statue is uh -huh. on a stone altar. And you can remember from the story Van Hoyland told you that uh, he took the scrolls from drawers underneath the altar. Then I will go and look for these drawers. Okay. Uh, it's not difficult. When you get over there, you can open up... Uh, sort of stone drawers underneath the altar. You can place the scrolls back inside. Do All you right. feel like you would say anything at this point, or are you just going to return them and try to leave? Mm. Return them? Probably look around the space a little bit longer. And then nod and leave. Hold on. Sorry about that. As you approach the exit, um, the same young woman as earlier comes down, this time wearing local clothing. Uh, yeah. She's going to uh, She's going to say I thank you um, I am The last priestess of Bast Have With the 
performed a service for my god. And <laughs> restored something that was stolen from her. It's only ready right to turn it. She wishes for you to have this. And she's going to take a um, a necklace off of her own neck. On which there is a little clay figure of a cat. <laughs> and hand it over to you. I am wrong. It's made of I, granite. I will, uh... I'll take it. Okay. And, uh, of course I'll ask the obvious question. <laughs> what... What does it do? It marks you as one favored by Bast. It will grant you protection and friendship. From her, um, from her, her worshippers. All right. I will, uh, will say thank you. She's going to incline her head towards you. And as you step back out through the doorway, um, you glance behind yourself into the room. It is now just a little dirt chamber. A little statue on the other side of it. Alright. But as you climb up the steps, that uh, little black cat that Birdie liked so much is yeah. going to jump onto your shoulders and curl up around your neck. Uh, almost against that, that pendant. <laughs> I will, uh, I think I've seen Birdie do this. Uh, go and put my finger under its chin and give it a little scratch. And say, hi there. Yeah, there's an approving purr. You stole my cat. Ugh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> Go to it. And make it night. Turn off token vision. Uh, when the group of you arrive at Giza, which is going to take a little bit of time but uh you're going to as you're driving down the road towards it connor you're going to realize mm -hmm. that you're passing not like one long procession but more than you would expect there are people walking along this road okay um, are they carrying anything? Uh, give me a spot hidden. Oh, oh, thank God. Yeah, uh, there are several times. Theodore, you're going to spot people carrying uh, what looks like ceremonial daggers. Are they wearing robes? Oh yeah. Uh, enough to disguise ourselves and like blend in. 
Uh, if you manage to grab some of them kind of isolated, yes, you would be able to disguise yourself with these ropes. Hey, Jean. I know you've been a part of this, but um, you guys, you guys ready to sneak in there as some cultists? <laughs> We're just gonna take out th three of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming I'm speaking as both Jean and Connor now. How you can about, just do Jean. How about we do this, Terry? You're going to be the voice of Jean, and Bri will be the roles of Jean. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the voice, but yeah, I can talk for him. I'm not doing the voice for him either. Don't worry. <laughs> This is this is your version of Jean. Don't worry, don't worry. If you want to just be him, that's fine. No, I can do the voice. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to make you do a bunch of rolls for this. There's, It's a long enough road. You pass enough groups of people that if you want to fall upon one of them... And take their stuff. You can do that. Uh, and then your group. Do you continue driving? Or are you going to abandon the vehicle and walk like the rest of them are doing now? Yeah. We're going we're gonna to end up walking. Okay. Now, just for the purposes of possible future dramatic turns. What do you do with the people whose clothing you steal? We're putting them on. Well, you're taking the clothing, we're, but what do you do with the people? Yeah. Um, we're gonna hog tie them. Hog tie them, leave behind the sand dune. Yeah, yeah, you know, just knock them out. Okay. Uh, and when you arrive, you see that there is a growing crowd of people around. So at the Sphinx, between its paws, is a a large stone obelisk not huge not like towering but 10 12 feet tall and you see the people are kind of gathering around it uh Just wondering how cautious you're being. Are you joining with the main press of people? Or are you going to watch from a distance? Um. Mm. Is this. Is it assumed we got clothing yet? Yeah, you're. Because I'm going to get as close. Uh, I'm going to get as in there as possible. Okay. So everybody's pressing up close with the crowd? Yeah. All right. Um, when you're all gathered close and wait some time for stragglers to arrive, uh, there are some songs that start up while you're waiting. Uh, kind of like weird hymns. But uh, seems to be mainly just a way to pass the time. Uh, all and right. And finally... Nobody's seen a picture of James's father, have they? We have been told what his dad looks like. I, I, wait, have we? You actually were there when, when the picture was passed around. Okay, so yeah. Uh, Connor, you're going to so see... I'll just say, Connor would be the one that would see it. You're going to see James's father step out of the crowd and walk up to the obelisk and uh, start chanting... Uh, in what apparently is ancient Egyptian. And after a moment, the uh, the obelisk is going to become translucent. And immediately, the group around it is going to begin jumping inside of it, at which point they vanish.
they're, they're jumping inside oh. what? They're so jumping in the or uh, ob that. There's a pillar. They're jumping into a translucent rock. Yes. I'm gonna follow. Okay. I I don't know I'm, about anyone else, but uh, Theodore's the in for a penny, in for a pound type person. I I feel like um, appropriate idea. Put my hand on your shoulder and say, "Are we sure we want to do this?" Uh, you're not there, bud. Well, yes, I'm not. Fun. Oh, he's oh, like John. yeah, yeah, he's John. <laughs> Are you sure you? I'm already do gone. This? Then, like, I, I'm not telling you guys. I'm just walking up. John, John I is very good. At this. We'll watch you. <laughs> we'll put hand on shoulder before you, knowing what you're about to do, and say, "Are you sure we want to do this?" Yes. I will be a moment. Theodore and Victor have no self-preservation <laughs> instincts. Listen, listen. They're, they're not doing anything good in there, right? If we can mess it up, that means it's good for us. Have you considered breaking and the crystal? What, <laughs> and what happens if we can't get out? What happens listen. if they find out that we're not one of them. John, 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 John. I can pass this for one of them. If you're... If you don't I'm think here you, you'd be able money. to get out... You, that's fine. That's My job fine. is to protect you guys. Not to get us killed. There's enough people that they won't notice us as long as we're in the same garb as them. I mean, how many of these uh, events that you went to yourself did everyone speak to you? you? We just have to look like we're busy and they're not going to talk to us. We just got to stay close enough near each other to know where the other ones are. There, uh, the group around this uh, this pillar is shrinking quickly. The uh, time is now. Let's go. Come on. Listen, I got us out of going? one sticky situation. I can get out of. I can get us out of this. Trust me. We'll look at Connor and say, "And you? Are we going?" I believe Connor stepped away for a moment. Nah. Connor indeed has stepped away. Yep. Uh, yeah. His eyes were glossed over for two seconds, and he's like, uh, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> Connor says out loud and starts, like, making his way towards it because, you know, he can't think of anything else, so you might as well do the dumb thing. Came all this way already, right? Right? I feel like it's appropriate for him to just sigh. Just say, uh, here we go again. And with that, you are going to find yourselves suddenly in a chamber underground. So uh, you're still going to hear people up ahead of you. It's not going to be difficult to follow them, but you're you're a little bit behind. Uh, the walls, the walls have a weird glowing fungus on them. It's not everywhere, but there's purple or green glow in this space. And in that light glow, you can you can see that this is a stone chamber about eight feet wide, about eight feet tall, and it winds off into darkness. Can I? Can I? Is anyone behind us or ahead of us immediately? Uh, you've got just a little bit of space ahead of you. Uh, nobody's can behind I... you yet, but there will probably be jumping in after you still. Can I scrape some of this into a bag real quick? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, yeah. And then I'll, I'll press on following right behind. Okay. Um, if you're staying with the group, I'm not gonna make you... We're not gonna have to, like, drag through the entire maze because you're following people. But, uh... As I'm going, I will, I will try to, like, uh, etch a mark. Okay. Is a stone though. You said that there's gl uh moss gl growing around it, right? There is it periodically. You want to try to scratch an arrow into the moss or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Like like at least a a notable. Like, if you're looking for it, a cut, you know, just like a quick slice, nothing too, like, something quick, not too noticeable. Okay. That's fair. You can do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Jean, as you're, as you're wandering ahead a little bit, you feel something dripping down on the back of your neck. And when you... Like reach to wipe this nasty water off the back of your neck, you find that your hand is red. Um, I will. Am I behind the others, or am I like in the middle? I'm. I'm putting you ahead for just a moment. You have me ahead? Uh, then I will kind of glance over at Connor and say Is there something red on my neck? Con Connor will examine them very subtly. <laughs> yeah, looks like uh, after he pauses I had asked you to look yeah, there's what looks like blood on the back of his neck. Then looking around, you see a red liquid dripping from the f ceiling and staining the f stone floor below it red. It's not a rash. The ceiling's bleeding. And Connor starts <laughs> walking casually again. Ugh. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Okay. Connor? As you walk along, you you notice that the the walls of this tunnel are rhythmically moving in and out. realize uh, it's like this tunnel is breathing I need you to make a sanity roll here excellent flesh walls flesh walls flesh walls roll to not have a panic attack where is Connor? Nice. Well, okay, Connor is... I, I was j making it funny that Connor was keeping us calm. But no, no, yeah, the ceiling's bleeding and their walls are breathing. I'm cool with this. Well, you're, you're only going to take one point of sanity loss, then. Awesome. Uh, oh, I did not click it. I just rolled sanity. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> it worked just fine. Okay. Uh, as long as you choose to follow the people ahead of you, it's going to... Like, you're, you're carving marks into the moss as you go by, but you're still 
very leery of the idea that you could find your way back out. Yeah. Hmm. As you're making twists and turns in these underground uh, passageways, until finally it opens up into a chamber. Uh, and this room is full. Okay. It is an enormous room. There are lots of enormous ebony pillars. Uh, and there are so many people in here holding torches that in the flickering light, the ceiling is sometimes visible. And you can swear that the top of these pillars splay out into the top of black trees with branches visibly swaying in winds that you can't feel. There is a, uh, there's a set of stairs those stairs ahead of you are not how you came in. Those stairs lead down into you know not what. The uh, no cultists are going down them. There is at the opposite end of the chamber you can see a pit. Uh, a, a pool, basically, filled with water. It is enormous. It's about 75 feet across, you uh, And there's a set of uh, black marble steps leading down into the pool. Okay. There's also an altar made of white marble. Uh, and you can see the crowd of cultists pushing forward around it. So, like, the fulcrum is around here, where everyone's at? This or looking at? Okay. I'm going to try to wriggle my way through all this. Okay. Yeah. Um, you are jostled back and forth as the cultists are swinging and moving around, and they're all pressing up trying to get to the front. I don't know if I'm going to lose them or not. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very difficult for the three of you to stay together, even if all of you did want to get up to the front of the room. Yeah. Uh, how about, so Theodore is pushing to get as close to the front as he can. How about Jean and Connor? Um, uh, yeah, Connor's gonna try to blend in and be by the pool and just watch from a distance. I won't worry about Connor too much, but, uh, I will be trying to stay as close as I can to Theodore. Uh, it is difficult, because you are all wearing the same black and red robes as everybody else in here. And there are, like, like 50, possibly more people pressed into this space. Yeah. So, I'll say that you're trying to stay close together, I'll put you in the same general area, but if push comes to shove, it may be difficult for you to be sure you're near them. Yeah. Alright. I will move to the place that I was thinking of. Go for it, yeah. I like how I you like... willingly put yourself further away. Mm -hmm. 
good man. Already conspiring against us. Look, look, look. You always need to scatter in a group like this, so you get multiple shots at the guy that's leading the thing. I guess. And whenever things are going chaotic, I'll just look for the only white guys in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely gonna help us. Well, if you take off your turbans, you can find each other. Yeah. Oh, God. So, uh, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, there are about 200 cultists here. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, don't blow your cover. <laughs> uh. After a moment, uh, Connor, you're going to recognize James's father again. Mm -hmm. Come out and stand beside the altar. And as the as the cult chants together, uh, their voices echoing off the walls of this chamber. A small procession is going to come out, carrying a mummified body. going to place it on the altar. And then, um, you're going to see a couple of people dragged. Uh, hands bump behind their backs, gags over their mouths. People you don't recognize, but a, uh, a middle-aged man and a woman in probably her late 60s uh, dragged out by this group and forced to kneel down next to the altar. The chanting is going to get louder, and the, the group begins to work itself up into a frenzy. So, just a quick question to clarify things. Mm -hmm. There's a group of people. Mm -hmm. Um, There's only one... This man. Al Shakti. He's the only one up there right now. Oh, well, no, there's a whole press of people around there. He's standing behind the altar. Okay. And there are people pressing up around the altar, and in front of it, two people have been forced to kneel down. Uh, as the people at the front become more frantic uh, and start dancing and screaming incoherently, uh, you're going to see one of them throw himself on the altar uh, next to the mummified body and then the people around him are going to begin beating him with clubs okay well there goes my what I was gonna do I'm just gonna <laughs> let that happen uh, and yeah. after they've killed him uh, his body is lifted up off of the altar and passed over their heads and thrown into this pool of water in the middle of the room. Uh, and the frenzy only gets wilder. Soon there are two or three people throwing themselves on the altar at a time, being beaten to death, and then thrown into that pit. Lovely! What about the people that are still kneeling there? Uh, they look panicked. Alright. Yeah, are there, so not... is there a difference between the people who are getting who are getting uh, clubbed and the club burrs? Uh, it looks like you don't see one. Uh, it, people are flinging themselves onto the altar willingly. And at this point they have to, like, it is clear that they know that means they're going to be clubbed to death. It looks like this is part of the ritual for them. I'm gonna I'm gonna slow down on go, trying to go forward. I don't blame you. 
<laughs> uh, Connor like takes like that pause, half step, and tries to like you know that moment where you're about to like turn heel, but realize that you can't turn around without being the person that stands out. Uh-huh. So Connor's like, okay, turns around. Wait, I can't leave. <laughs> Oh wait. A hundred percent. I'm trying I'm trying to look at skills. Okay. Um I do okay, just ignore that. I was trying to look at <laughs> I was trying to get it to pop out. Uh that that roll right there, uh yeah, they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Can can I work that into something? Because I was gonna ask about it. What do you want to know here? Um. Listen. I'm back. The way this back man's back. acting, I I've never I might have never met the person, but I've seen his. I assume I've seen the picture. You of, would have uh, not have been there to see no, the picture. No. Okay. Never mind. I, just just never mind. I. He does look like you can. Like it's back of your mind. It's like tickling your brain. He looks familiar. He looks like somebody I know, but not quite. <laughs> I was gonna ask about uh, seeing how he's moving, um, how he is uh, conducting this ritual. Oh, he's uh, he's dancing frantically too, and when people throw themselves on the altar, he also has a club. Okay. Uh, and then. He throws his arms out, and uh, people continue chanting, but they stop the frenetic dancing, and nobody comes forward to throw themselves on the altar anymore. And he steps forward to the woman that's kneeling down, and he removes her gag. And he kneels down and speaks to her. Uh, it is too noisy in here for you to have any idea what he's saying to her. But, uh,. You can see that she looks up and uh, she's she's arguing with him. Uh, and he speaks to her again. And then she uh, it looks she looks defeated. And she begins uh, It looks like she, she sits back she puts her head into the air and she closes her eyes. And then after a moment, um, her eyes snap open, but her eyes are rolled back into her head. And the chamber quiets. And you hear her, you hear her voice ringing out in the sudden silence. Calling to Queen Natakris, asking her to join, uh, to join you at this place. Uh, it turns into a prayer, seeking her help, seeking the guidance of, uh, seeking the guidance of the Black Pharaoh to help her join you. And then, as she's speaking, uh, the priest, Omar al-Shakti, takes a knife and cuts the throat of the man kneeling on the ground and turns him around so that his blood begins soaking the mummy on the altar. Can I, can I, like, force the flow of the blood to not land on that thing? Can give it a try. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to, please. Oh God. Telekinesis. I'm just gonna do some dancing, you know, and and, and try to stop this ritual from taking place. We can let you do this as a shield, basically. Okay. 
how much will this cost in magic? Let's see. Let's say you only need one magic point for one point of armor. You don't need more than that. Okay. Yeah. Like it's not uh, really damage. You're just trying to prevent the blood from getting on the corpse. And regular roll. Regular telekinesis roll. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. So there's there's a there's a everybody sees a strange thing as the blood flows over this weird almost like there's a dome over the body it flows over the dome and falls onto the floor and El Shakti is going to look around uh... <laughs> and he oh! can't tell he cannot tell what happened. <laughs> then he's going to grab one of the cultists uh, who happens to be near him and he's going to force him onto the altar right next to the body and he's going to move to cut his throat. I'm pausing so that Travis has an opportunity to respond to this. So he just does it again? He's just... he's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's interrupted. Yeah, it looks like he's about to just do it again, and this time with the body... Like, the, the victim right next to the body. I didn't do what? So if you want to do something a little, like, make it a little more obvious that you're the one intervening, you can, but he's about to just do it again. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. Mm -mm. So he does, uh, and it, the blood begins to soak into the, uh, the wrappings of the mummy. And you can see the, uh, the elderly lady... Uh, suddenly stop chanting, uh, stop, stop praying, and her voice changes, and she's no longer speaking English. Uh, sounds like something you may have heard James say before, like, uh, like possibly ancient Egyptian. Mm. And while she's doing that, the man grabs her and lifts her up next to the altar and cuts her throat as well. And the, uh, the blood continues to soak into the mummy and you can see, even from as far back as you are, you can see the mummy's demaciation is beginning to go away. It is plumping up and beginning to look more like living flesh under those wrappings. Molotov. <laughs> and then the corpse sits up. Uh, and while it's sitting on the altar, one of the cultists is going to, uh, well, Omar is going to grab a cup that's sitting on the altar and hold it out to a cultist nearby who's going to cut his own throat and allow the blood to run into the cup. And he will hand the cup to the mummy. <laughs> and uh, she's be going. She's going to begin chanting in. Egyptian now. Ancient Egyptian. And then you're going to see a uh, from this pit behind her over here 
You're gonna see a paw. The size of a bus. Come up out of the pit. And then another. And then you're going to see... You didn't know that the Sphinx was based on anything. But you're going to see the being that the Sphinx was carved to resemble emerge from the pit. And... I'm not going to have to answer a riddle, am I? Oh no, that's uh... That would be a nice Sphinx. I know I said that uh, I wasn't going to act him out, but I feel like it would be a, a reasonable thing for Jean to begin backing towards the doorway at this point. Oh, I believe it. But first, everybody's going to make a sanity check. Mm -hmm. Oh, but anyway, I like permission. I've rolled this like three times now. I got a 44, but it says that I also lack permission for Jean. What the hell? Okay, Technical so difficulties. Just roll whatever, like everybody roll a sanity thing, it doesn't have to be for that. Jean is good. also d4 of loss so far everybody in this room has lost four sanity points did he also lose four no he lost three yeah but Jean, previously he lost one Sean is at um about half sanity at this point where, where just throwing that out there Oh, that's, that's good to know. Is Joey still here? He rolled the sanity check, that's all I can tell you. Okay. We need to do one as well for witnessing the, uh... Witnessing this whole story. Let's see if this one will work better for us. That's for Victor. Uh, but yeah, I should be heard now, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, cool. I got a hard. Jean ain't doing great. Four. Oh, we have an ex uh, an additional sanity loss. Okay. Yeah, for the ceremony. Also, I will be right back. Okay, so I never will check for that. Ooh. I apparently I I failed the check, but. Oh, there it is. 2d8. 12. Ooh. Uh, I rolled max. Ooh. Uh, not max. Could have been 16. No, it was 2d6. That I lost. No, it's no a, that was 2d8. You need it to 1d6 oh, okay. if you fail. So, Connor, yeah. you immediately undergo a personality shift upon witnessing all of this. Uh, you're going to be replaced by a near opposite of your normal personality. Jean, you sort of get the same thing. You are going to flee in panic. Alright. Theodore uh, needs one as well. Just to need to draw. What do I need? Theodore, your... <laughs> your, um... Your bout of madness is you become a show-off. 
You are an attention seeking baby after four rounds. Possibly prone to foolhardy acts. Okay, so nothing's changed. Uh, so Jean is fleeing. Connor, what is going to be the opposite of your personality here? Uh, like... In, the, in this situation, like, with low sanity, Connor would be thinking that this kind of situation would make him laugh in a way but like as a i don't know i've always ran connor whenever he's low sanity things are just funny to him okay. and and uh in this situation i think connor would become unreasonably angry okay Okay, and what do you do when you're unreasonably angry? Let me give you one more thing real quick here. Uh, so, mm -hmm. the Sphinx having emerged from the pit is going to begin eating the cultist nearest to it. Uh, its mouth just reaching down and snatching them up. Uh, you can see limbs and blood flying out of its mouth as it chews, and then the cultists are panicked and yet there are so many of them packed up around there that they can't get out of their own way they're trampling each other falling over and he's just gorging himself on them where is this happening at what pit this is at the head of the room behind the altar gotcha so i think uh the reasonable thing connor should be doing is start throwing punches at the nearest cultist next to him right. because they're they're getting in his way they're being annoying and he hates them for doing something this awful <laughs> that's absolutely fair uh, as you're doing this that pit that you're right next to the pool that they were throwing the bodies into uh, the bodies begin rising up and singing Mm. Oh, lovely. Can I can I just force them back down? <laughs> you just like putting your head, head on their heads and shuffling? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, can I put a wall to just slowly force their faces back down? That... Just, <laughs> a wall to push all of them down might be a bit too much for you. But you can... <laughs> but remember, you're not doing this secretly. You're a show-off. <laughs> but yes, you can stand there and go back into the pit. Or a number cards, we um. I'm able to. I'm actually moving and kind of like trying to run out, right? You are trampling cultists on your way out of here. Uh, question. Good. Good. Uh, I would like to roll a cult. Uh, what do I know? I, I would like to see what I know about Sphinx real quick. Okay. If uh, anyone gets in my way, I just pick them up and throw them over my head. <laughs> nothing. I know nothing about Sphinx. Uh, you know what is right there. It, Sphinx sounds like sphincter. And that's it. You can you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. I'm uh, I'm waiting for something to. Do. I, I'm trying to find something showy to do, but nothing too effective. Um. I have a question. Could I? Could I? I, uh, James, I'm sorry, but I have to ask about this. Is, is it feasible for me to like force El Shakti into the, uh, like Sphinx's mouth? Uh, you can try. But again, remember, you're not doing it secretly. Let's say that's all up to you. And I'm, I'm not there. Hmm. 
tried to do that, he is going to know who did it. Mm -hmm. If you do anything at this point, you're going to make sure that everybody in the room knows it was you that did it. There is no there is no trying to be sneaky right now. You know what? Why not? No, I I need a sec. I need a second to think. All right, I, I'm, all right. I'm letting too many things happen. All right. Uh, so there there is absolute carnage at the front of the room as the Sphinx is eating people, and then um, the mummy is going to hold up her hand and say something else in Egyptian, and the Sphinx is going to retreat. But then uh, all of that blood and gore on the ground, uh, left as the remains of its meal, is going to begin swirling around in a slow whirlpool and rising up into the shape of a 12 foot tall man. Uh, and the altar is going to become a throne. And this gore-ridden figure is going to sit down on the throne next to the mummy of Natalis. You've had a moment to think. What are you doing? Connor, your punches, like the fact that you're punching these cultists, it is not unusual and not drawing attention to you because they are all doing that at this point. It is an orgy of violence. Yeah. I, you know, I think I'm just gonna get swept up and. You're just gonna fight with everybody else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Jean, you fight and fight, and you're going to run out into those weird, um, twisting underground chambers. The other two, you are going to lose track of yourselves amid the enormous melee underground. And I think we'll just jump to um, the next morning. <laughs> when the three of you will find yourselves out in the middle of the desert. Uh, you'll come to, not right next to each other, but close enough that when you wake up and stumble around a bit, you'll find each other. Did I murder someone last night? <laughs> Caleb. Uh, yeah, yeah. Connor's hands are literally stained red. Right? Oh, yeah, and, and your, like sore. Your are cracked and, and bloody. And... <sighs> what about me? Uh, the last thing you can remember, Jean, is running through endless tunnels underground. All right, so like a maze. Yeah, shaking hands, Connor is lighting himself a cigarette. And he's muttering to himself that Birdie is going to kill him. Uh, back in the hospital, Victor and Birdie are going to wake up after a peaceful night's rest. The first you've had, like, you're drugged up, so you had a really nice sleep. 
you've gotten medical attention, like real professional medical attention for the first time in a long while. I feel horrifically hungover. Yes, you will feel that a bit. They, <laughs> they give you water to help deal with that. And James, out of this whole group, you had a nice experience last night. <laughs> You'll wake up uh, in your own soft bed at the hotel. Uh, feeling like you really accomplished something good. And nobody got hurt for once. And then you realize no one else is in the hotel room. Oh, yeah, nobody's there with you. There's, except the cat. I well, go, uh, that doesn't seem good. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll have to go talk to you guys later. It's okay. We're ending. <laughs> okay. Bye. <sighs> he got out of me getting to rag on him. Damn. <laughs> I like how uh, out of everybody, James had the most peaceful. <laughs> return the documents that weren't yours in the first place. Yep. I mean, after the shock of finding out your dad is the leader of the cult, I, I feel like you deserved a, a little bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on a fun little adventure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Met a, a nice... a nice priest. <laughs> Yeah, if you got, at least according to her, you got the favor of a god. Yeah. Maybe I could use it as a uh, protection. Or a way to stop the Black Arrow. You can try. But, uh, I think for this week we're going to draw to a close. Okay. And next week we can regroup and see what you, where you want to go from here. Sounds great. Sweet. Oh, Thank you for doing so much out. narration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to just take over the stream, but there was a lot happening tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. 90% of that I was in stun silence, so you got it. <laughs> Yeah, there was not much anybody could do to stop that situation. <laughs> like, I was waiting no. for them to chant to make them silent by uh, making them choke on their tongue. That was Connor's plan. And then he's realizing, this is a different kind of ritual. Uh... Kind of a lot of them. Oh yeah, like, the second that he realized he is unbearably outnumbered right now, and like this is a different kind of experience and all of that stuff like yeah connor connor was lost i mean i tried i really did try to go and say are we sure we want to do this oh yeah yeah i know like i knew it was a bad idea from the get-go but and we uh, went in there anyways character <sighs> char character growth yeah. look look Look, throw your character th through the meat grinder and they become a more interesting character on the way out. Characters are like geodes. In order to let them shine, you must break them. <laughs> Gonna add some of that pressure to turn them into a diamond. Yep. Uh... Yeah, Connor went... It might Connor take. went from 80 sanity to 53. Jesus. <laughs> In one session. Say 80 to. Uh, oh, I miss. I, I, I'm oh, over my man. daily sanity loss by a yeah. lot. Yeah, all of you are. You have an extreme yeah. amount of insanity here. Yeah. Yeah, Connor. Connor's not doing good. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, from what I saw, some of you guys were, uh, what was it? Um... Uh, 
by the way, though, James. Yeah. For restoring the, uh, for restoring the scrolls to Bast, you do get one sanity back. Hey. Yo. Everything's <laughs> one, going up, all James. One whole sanity. Well, that's that's James though. That's not Jean. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. We care about James. <laughs> I, I've gone I, through I, a lot. Very, very funny question. Not at all serious. Hey, do, do I get brawl training from that night? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Hey! <laughs> Jesus. Let me give it to Theodore as well. Hey! <laughs> Oh, uh, you already had all the one point of sanity back. I didn't. No. I'll go and do that quick. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I mean, like, at a certain point, yeah, Connor just had to join in some small way because that's the that's the opposite of what Connor wants nowadays to do the thing that the cult <laughs> wants. Yeah, I, I feel like that was very appropriate, just joining in what everybody else was doing. Yep. Yeah, like, just anger and spite, but still giving in. It feels like the opposite of Connor. So, anything you want to say or ask before we go off the air? Oh? Huh? Don't join your local cult. cult. Things like this happen. <laughs> There are multiple things that I could say, but I don't want us to get knocked off the air forever, so. Okay. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Buenas noches. Make sure to uh, scratch under the chin of your cat. Oh, yes. <laughs> Give your cat lots of affection for us. It's